Welcome back. Okay, so now for the next step, we're actually going to take this into ZBrush. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to separate out these objects a little bit. We're going we're gonna to put our rings, barrel rings up here, and I'm going to got the lid in the middle there. Kind of it's having us all broken apart. And I'm going to save this. So we're going to go save as. And I'm going to go to... I believe this is the 21st day for 3D coat. My computer is acting up a little bit here. All right, go 21. Let me double check that really quick. Yep, 21st. So 21st, and we're going to say barrel and barrel. Okay, now that's saved we're actually going to go and we're going to export it. So we're going to export scene and export barrel and save. And I actually want to export this at full resolution. So it's going to give me this option here and I'm just going to click here and go zero. So it stays current polys. Click OK. This will take just a second to export. And while that's happening, we're going to boot up ZBrush. And uh, I'm actually going to show you how to turn this into low poly and stuff as well. But we're going to do that after I get some of the sculpting done. We could technically do it right now, but I think this will be better if we do the sculpting first. Okay, so now I've got ZBrush open up. And okay, close that out. We're going to import that uh, same uh, the OBJ that we exported just a second ago. So I can go into my barrel file, barrel, and we're going to hit Control N for a new canvas. And in the barrel selected here, so we're going to drag that onto our scene and hit T to start editing. Okay, so now we've got that. We're going to figure out what we need to. Um, do for the next step here. So first things first, I think the first thing we need is to add those barrel lines and stuff. So we're going to go in, into here and go activate symmetry the same way we did with, with 3D coat. But we want radial symmetry, so I'm going to hit R here. And then we have to find the correct uh, radial direction. It's probably going to be Z. Nope. <laughs> I always get these mixed up, so probably Y. Yeah, there we go, Y. So now with Y, I'm going to scale down our brush with the brackets. And there we go. See, ZBrush is a little more, a little, little better at handling this stuff. And, okay. Oops. I'm just going to look at that really quick and see how that looks. Okay. So now I'm going to hit B and go to O, and this is Orb Cracks. This is actually a brush that I downloaded. Um, it's pretty easy to find if you just Google search Orb Cracks, and you can install that. I hit the space bar, and we're going to change the focal shift a little bit on here. Okay. And I'm going to go back to Radial, and we're going to choose 9. Let's see, 9. Let's see how that looks for... We could do this and then maybe like have one or two be a little bit different. So let's actually do a larger gap between them. So like seven. And then maybe I can add like one like that later or something like that. So this will give us a little bit of kind of room to play around with. I might actually go even a little bit lower. Since I don't have a concept, I'm kind of playing around with the stuff as I go. And I'm going to actually, since I brought this in all together, we're going to go back to Subtool, Split, and Group Split. Hit OK. And we're going to do Solo. So when I click on the object I want, there we go. So now we, we're just looking at one object at a time. This is a lot simpler. And I'm just going to car start carving in those shapes. And for navigation, it's pretty similar to 3D Coat. 
You kind of use Alt to slide around and click off the side here, or I believe it's, is it right click? Yeah, right click, right click, and you can scroll and turn around, or just click off into nothing, and it'll do the same thing. And we're gonna look at this. This actually needs a little more geometry, I believe. So we're gonna undo that what we sculpted and hit Control D, and that'll sub it up a little bit. Yeah, that looks like enough. I go from the top, we're just gonna start figuring out where these boards kind of cut in. And remember, we don't have to be too clean about this base here because we're gonna have that separate piece go on top of there. And there, that's cut in nicely. I'm just gonna go across here. And there we go. Get in the bottom here. And for the most part, I'm probably gonna need a lot of orb cracks for this one. And remember, once again, we're gonna have that base piece down there too. So we don't have to worry too much about that. And this, this is kind of a strange way to have all these pieces separated and stuff, but that'll, you'll see why I'm doing that later. And I'm sure there's a better workflow. This is just kind of what I'm using right now for my 3D December. Uh, and also make sure you save. So we're gonna save barrel. I just wanna keep the same name. It's all different file types, so it doesn't matter if they have the same name right now. Okay. Um, I wonder if we can dock this over here. Let's dock symmetry over on the side here. So we can actually just turn symmetry off. And I'm gonna start adding in some of those other boards I was talking about. Cause I don't want this to look like it's completely symmetrical, but I can use a little bit of the symmetry to help me get stuff done a little faster. And our next phase is gonna be kind of cut in in those wood chunks. I'm gonna put another board over here. So it'll be kind of like wide, narrow, and another narrow one up here. We could probably figure out our pattern right here. We just kind of go like that. This one could be like an even split. That's probably a decent, a decent pattern. Do, do, do. Just cutting along these, getting our basics cut in. And normally with ZBrush, uh, you have to hold Alt to switch between, you know, kind of extrude and or concave and convex, however you want to look in that cut or whatever, or add and subtract. But you'll notice with orb cracks by default, it's set to subtract. It's designed to do cracks for rocks and things like that. And one thing to note uh, when you're using ZBrush, and you should notice if you use a little bit, but you just want to do the save from the tool and not the document because you just want to save the actual object itself. Okay. I'm just going to spin around this really quick just to see. That's kind of a nice variety. We have some de decent variety in board sizes and stuff like that. And I'm just going to do a quick save just to kind of, kind of periodically save. And now I'm going to start adding kind of those, uh, like the wood cracks and stuff to this, the barrel, kind of all that character. And this is just gonna be for the, you know, the high poly mesh is gonna get this. I'm still using org, cra org cracks. I'm just pressing a lot lighter. And maybe even a, lot, a little bit of this, kind of like the edge here just to get messed up a little bit. Think of like the, barrel sort of cutting in. One thing to note is, you know, I don't actually know where the placement of those rings and everything are gonna be. That's a positive and a negative because, I mean, I have a general idea where they were, but if you think about it, like, I'm not gonna be, my wood grain is gonna be nice and consistent. I'm not gonna be thinking about, oh, how is, you know, how's that interfering or how's it interacting? And let's see. We might actually put it all together at the end too. We'll test some different stuff out that kind of comes down to when you bake out our meshes and stuff. 
So this process is just kind of just a lot of uh, just a lot of uh, thinking about how these how this wood grain would be, how it acts. You know, is there going to be any scratches or things like that? Maybe I'll make the brush a little smaller using the brackets. Add some kind of general wood grain. And then we're going to do another board. And you want to make sure that this board is just, you know, it doesn't have the same feeling of the same curvatures and things like that. These are, you know, this all this could have been from a completely different log. You never know where it where it came from originally. And I'm just cutting in a lot of these just to kind of give some character here. And we want to make sure this this cut is the, the deepest, has the most the most viewing. Like it's kind of like you think of it like the first read, second read. Uh, first read obviously the silhouette of the barrel. Second read we want to make sure that people are seeing that split in the wood. And this top bit's pretty pretty important here too. At least the top edge of the wood because so that's kind of where when you have a piece of wood or something it always kind of breaks the most up at the top probably what will happen is this object will be posted on my 3d December before I actually have the tutorial up I'll have to let people know that the tutorial is coming be a blast from the past when everyone watches this Okay, and yeah, we've done a little bit of work, so let's just play really quick. And I'm kind of looking at some of my, see my shield over there that has some, some interesting information I could look at for my you know, wood patterns and things like that. I'm kind of just thinking of interesting swooping patterns. I could look at, if I had some wood flooring in the room I'm in, that would be helpful. I could look at that, but I don't. <laughs> you can just pull up for this type of thing. You can just pull up uh, nice reference images of uh, flooring, wood lumber, barrels, anything you can find, really. Uh, if you want to go with like more of a stylistic look, make sure and look up uh, other artists that have approached the same situations. Kind of see how they, they've approached adding uh, this wood grain. And kind of how they interpreted having less information and you know, maybe we could have like a little bit of a knot or something like that that might be a good a good fit maybe we'll do maybe we'll do a knot right over here or something so or at least where where branch is starting to form so that's where you kind of get those you know, just some, some like this let's kind of cut that in here Maybe they didn't, maybe this is grade A lumber. They didn't quite have a knot here yet. So it's just kind of, actually, let's try this. I believe it does want to do this. Yeah, let's do that. It looks, looks kind of cool like that. That's a nice swooping pattern. We'll make it work. And just to let you know, I'm using a Cintiq for this, the same I use for my streams and everything. Um, you probably could do this with a mouse if that's all you had. I mean, I've done that in the past using the, uh, I believe there's a tool up here called Lazy Mouse. Yeah, you'd be able to do this with Lazy Mouse. It would be a lot harder if we could do it. But there's a will, there's a way. So there's really not too much to add for this. I mean, uh, as far as my process I get to kind of talk about what I plan on doing I'm gonna we're gonna do the the retopology is gonna be done in 3d coat and the uh, the uh, I'm gonna texture it in the substance painter which I've been using a lot lately and I really like it highly recommend that Um, 
Let's add a few more kind of cracks, like the wood's kind of pulling off here, kind of splitting at the joints and things like that. Okay, I'll make my brush a bit bigger. Kind of expand this crack out a bit more. Okay. It's coming along. This is kind of a, you could say this is relaxing, or, or some people think it might be tedious. This part's not so tutorialized, I suppose. It's more of just kind of showing the workflow. But uh, we'll talk about uh, 3D December a little bit. So, so I started uh, with the inspiration of Inktober from uh, Jake Parker. And I just wanted something that was similar to Inktober where you do a daily piece of art in that, you know, in that medium. And just to better yourself, just to, you know, have those cracks kind of lined up. And having like a daily a daily thing you do is a great way to get better at something. I mean that's why people work out on a daily basis. They want to better their bodies, and shape it in a certain form. So if you want to get better at something, do it daily. And you know it doesn't have to be the most advanced thing or anything like that. I'm just doing pretty simple stuff, but having finished it every day is that's key. And I think that's another thing that uh, Jake Parker mentions. It's just finishing stuff. Like it's more important to finish something, have it be all right or not even that good than to not do it or just never finish it, never get it out there. It's a key to get it finished. It's uh, almost done here. Just uh, let me, I'm actually gonna look up some more wood patterns wood patterning just for some more inspiration for these last few pieces and you, know, you can do a search for any kind of or wood grain pattern or something like that come up with something any, anything would be helpful really uh, let's do I'm gonna look up a rustic wood floor that'll probably give me a good a good vision of what I'm looking for here. Some more variety. I'm gonna copy that. It's a little bit well, it's a little bit real little res. I'll find a better one. I'm just gonna put that in my inspiration so everyone can kind of see what I'm referencing as I while I do this. And kind of hard finding oh here this is a good one. Oh, it's a little bit small. We're going to put that in right for this. It's got some really interesting patterns. Like I like this one that's like uh, the third board on the right there. It's doing like this kind of, let's see if I can mimic it kind of. Almost like that swoop. Let's stylize it a bit more and just kind of reduce the amount of information it has. Or maybe we'll do it on a smaller board. So we have here. Kind of comes over here. There we go. And it's kind of working there. And then it kind of comes out to a standard there. This will be kind of that one, <laughs> the one unique board within them all. But see, it sort of balances out at the end here. Or at least I'll make it bounce out a little bit. Just kind of add, try to mimic these curves like they're pulling off each other. And that's probably good. And I'm just going to add a few of these mid ones in here. And this other one I like, I like this. Uh, 
almost second to last one. Has a bit of a knot in there and that has that kind of swoop that sort of pulls off. Great. So the, kind of the knot will be right here and it kind of swoops off. And that's not quite right. There we go. Yeah, never be afraid to use a reference. Reference is key to get things the way you want them. Or just to think of things you may not have thought of before. And so that my case was I just wanted to get some information that you know, maybe I wasn't really thinking about. There we go. Almost done. And I'll just kind of cut a little deeper here. And this doesn't quite have any segments. So now let's look around our barrel and just check out what we've got going on. And this was all done with orb cracks. We could add a little bit more information here. Maybe we'll just kind of have it go thick to thin in a few spots. Maybe have another piece kind of pull off here. It's a little too intense. There we go. There we go. Okay, and don't forget to save. Uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for stopping by and checking this out. Uh, Give me a like and a comment and a subscribe if you really liked everything. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.